could just share a little bit on uh, how, I mean, since the kid, have you been doing carving? And I have a piece in the uh, garage that mom had saved that I'd done when I was in seventh grade. And you can see a progression, and this piece is ugly. But it shows you how things have progressed. And, but she saved you know, it. This okay. piece was kind of going on in my head for several years until I got to it. And I made a dragon earlier and put it on a greenhouse up at K State. And we kind of stuck it in to see how many people would see it. Uh -huh. And no one ever took it down. And when the gentleman finally quit in that work area, we took it down and we took it up to put it on his farm. And from that, I made my own and I added wings. And it was lacking something, and the barbed wire took off the map. Yeah. So. But is it, what did you start out with? Uh, sheet metal? Or there, it's sheet metal, and there's two bundles of brazing rod in that. It's all brazed together with brazing rod. And that's a stainless steel ball, and I made the lightning rod piece on the, on the lake. And, uh, the little piece under the dragon is just a piece of sheet metal and I made a little cap and laid it up in brass. Wow. And then the wings that uh, were just progression of adding more and more feathers onto it and kind of as it goes. So has it aged there? Yeah, or is it, that it's a... probably been there about four years now. It was real bright and shiny and now it's you know, rusty. So how, have you had any um, art, uh, I mean in high school did you do I art? I had art classes, yeah. I had a ceramics class, a drawing and painting class, and it wasn't, just what, <laughs> it wasn't what it could have been. Well, you, yeah. everyone in high school probably doesn't quite reach their full potential yeah. as the class. But you knew that you liked, evidently, from early on to work I, with your I've hands. always, yeah. I, this one piece in there, inside, is I used a coping saw and a wood chisel. It's the only thing I used on this. And, uh, so, so where do your ideas come from? What? Uh, a lot of it is I grew up in California and moved back and forth from the coast and that type thing. And uh, Ed Roth. Uh, Van Dutch, the pinstriping, the hot rods, the motorcycles, it's a lot of flames and skulls and, mm -hmm. you know, that type of artwork yeah. that, that was in the surfer generation and uh, the tiki gods and all that type of stuff. But growing up in that generation, mm -hmm. in my mind is always going on whenever I pick up something. I don't want to throw that away. You're looking for me. So do you want to say a little bit about this one? Then? This is just uh, having been in Japan and everything when I was in the Navy, I, I just really had an obsession with their artwork and their dragons and tigers and that type of thing. So that's kind of my idea of a, a dragon in you know, Kansas farm machinery. So, well, do you know what those parts, I mean, what are those? Uh, uh, this is off an old corn picker and this is some combine chain and not having a real farm background. These are, I believe, off a of hay rake. Maybe corrected so, on that. Now our well, they're, they're, uh, the guards could have been on a sickle bar, sickle yeah. bar like a swath or anything. Yeah. I'll show you another one of these. All right. This one is my favorite. This is just <coughs> copper and tailpipes and that's an old drag racing trophy I had. And a piece of a motorcycle fender. Well, your copper, can you tie that into the... Just scrap. Okay. Yeah, this little bird is just uh, copper and solder. Oh, nice! And, uh, I came back after visiting Garden of Eden, and this was where my <laughs> mind was going nuts. And so that's what I guess we do for. Yeah. So, you know, that's where I kind of got the influence there. Well, how did you, I mean, you do a little, with welding and things like that, yeah. does, uh, 
There's a, another one from the Garden of Eden where he was peeking in the back window. I, I just thought that was so neat. And I'm criticized for spending too much time in the garage. So this is my own. Uh, Here he is. You know, SP uh, peeping in the window there uh, at the, when you take the tour. <laughs> yeah. So that's where he came from. See, that's good. This one's my favorite. Ooh. You just kind of come together. But now, how you're well? I mean, some of these are welded. Now, how, yeah. I mean, did you? Train. I mean, did you ha uh, in your work? Have you ever? I've been a boilerman for 36 years, working on boilers and power plants. So yeah, the welding, the torch, and with that, that's a yeah, function. Yeah, and the cars and the hot rods and you know that type oh, thing. If I ever wanted anything, I had to make it. So. So, so yeah. what do we? What, do you know what you got in this one? Uh, and this is one of those cloud tanks. When I'm out hunting, I go through, I spend more time in the farmer's junk than I do out there chasing <laughs> the birds. But, uh, and these are old sprockets, and again, the chain, and these are just old square nails. That, uh, I had a big coffee can of them, we'll picked them up where a barn had burned down. So, and did, this is did you? How, I mean, did you see this? Did you draw it out on paper? Or did you see it in your mind? I uh, just will start laying it out on no. the garage floor and, and putting pieces together. And, uh, I'll this show you great. an eyeball thing I found in the at a yard sale, and, and I saw this eyeball, and I was criticized for buying this eyeball, but I could see it on a pedestal. So uh, <laughs> oh, that's yeah. what we. That's, that's beautiful. You've yeah, got that, really fine lines. Yeah. yeah. There's another one that's kind of Ooh. similar to, to the other one. The time to do something larger. Uh, I'd like to do a big dinosaur dragon looking bird and hang it in the tree out here. Wow. Mm -hmm. Just keep keep yeah. a hold of that thought. <laughs> the dragon and the wings are set back in the yard enough that when people walk by, they don't even see it. But when they do see it, I really get some look. Oh, that sounds like and, a uh, If I have all the Christmas lights on in the garage and have uh, Hendrix on and that type thing and that going, there, uh, <laughs> our neighborhood walkers get quite a look. <laughs> statement against little old ladies painting barns on saw blades. 
yeah. <laughs> so, and I've had another saw blade in here for several years. It's about this big, but I've never taken off on the painting of it. Uh, these are a lot of my little wood carvings and things that I do. And that was a scrap that was going in the wood pile. And so now what types of wood? Uh, this is linden wood and I'll do a lot of cedar. Uh, I do a lot of walking sticks. You can see that one's roughly laid out. Wow. And uh, this one doesn't have a finish on it yet, but Ooh. that's... Uh, Those are beautiful. But that's some of the spider webs and flames from the from the 50s and 60s going on. This is just yeah. a piece of deer antler. And, uh, I'll make knives and different things with the deer antler. And, uh, never throw anything away. So yeah. You don't dare. And, uh, so you don't necessarily have a favorite medium that you work in then, do you? Uh, I've been do you? leaning more towards the wood lately. Uh, I haven't been getting into the the welding in the garage. I need to mm -hmm. back everything out to weld and everything. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but is that wind and wood is that right? Is that native? I mean, uh, is there is some in Kansas that's more native to Missouri. But yeah, I have found a few farms where I've been able to cut it. And I knew a tree tree trimmer that was bringing it to me for a while. Uh, I have a linden tree in the yard. I thought that 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 name you liked the leaf or something to it, didn't yeah, you? Yeah. You have or a lindenwood tree. You have the stuff to do. Uh, wow! This is just an old pine log that was going to the dump. I don't know if you saw the bear out there in the corner. Yes. Done with the chainsaw, but. Uh, is this chainsaw? No, this no. is roughed out with the chainsaw, but... Uh, so now, if you just see a piece of the wood, how did you decide that this should uh, be this particular? I've always drawn the old man and that type of thing in the faces. And, uh, and why do you think that is? Uh, I... I really don't understand my own mind. It's just kind of one of those things that you know, never uh, I just always like to look at people and the character in their face. And, mm -hmm. uh, there's a piece of sycamore with deer antler on the handle, but uh, you can see that a lot of these are Here's one with a lot of some faces in it and some turquoise in it. But, uh, these are things I can do instead of watching TV. I, I can sit in the house on the couch and, and do these type things. And, uh, there is really a... If you get out and really look, this was a limb off a cedar tree with a natural bend in it for a cane. And I've been saving that one back for a special project. But uh, um, when I'm out turkey hunting too, I'll be sitting under a cedar tree and I always come home with a couple of limbs. So that's kind of a work in progress. There. Now, are you going to put, I mean, these are words. Are you going to put yeah. that? You're going to yeah, those that are in? all ports of call that I've been in. So uh, that was going to. Here's one with faces and leaves. And, and the wood kind of tells you where the yeah, things just, are meant to be. Yeah, yeah, I just sit down with a pencil and start sketching on it. This is very good. I mean, very good. Uh -huh. so, it really has a gift for us. And, and this is just a piece of cedar. And, uh, well, now, how do you attach this? Um, I mean, that's a, a, a 
looks like that was missed. Oh, uh, yeah, I'll drill down into the antler and into the piece, and then I'll take a piece of all-threaded rod. And J.B. Weld, if you ever read the testimonial on J.B. Weld, you can fix or do anything with that stuff. <laughs> so, you know, I just have to have it. I mean, that is just as, I mean, yeah. looks like it was meant. There's another one with a face. And you notice know, these bear bells? Yeah. I had a gentleman bring this one back from Colorado for me for the sticks. But I think that's like going out in the woods and ringing the dinner bell. Here I am, but uh, they they claim those bear bells work. That it it draws. Uh, it's, it's, it's supposed to chase them away, but oh, chase them away. <laughs> but I still think it's going out there ringing their dinner bell. I would every time. Yeah. But that, but that, yeah. And then these yeah. you, you're staining some different colors. Yeah, I'm this is sycamore. Away. This is cedar. Uh, you, that other piece was linden wood. No, no, this is just natural. If you uh, put a finish on it. This has a dark stain okay. on it and it's brought that snake bite pattern. And this is one of, this was 1991. You can see a progression mm -hmm. on some of my carving. But, but, and what, what would this be? This one is linden wood. And yeah. what type of a, I mean, is it e mm, okay. e easier? Linden wood is, is a it? soft, easy wood to work, yeah. And with the, the pine? Uh, with cedar is a little harder to work. The, the trick is sharp tools. And, uh, I don't use anything fancy. I use a utility knife and an exacto knife. And I do have a couple of little V gouges for veining the hair and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. uh, there's not a big investment in tools. And there's another one. I, a lot of the better ones I've given away. Kind of catching the, this one is this was one of the first lizards I've done, and, and you can see where I started adding leaves and uh, the progression in them. And uh, you can see the progression in the faces. Right, right. Uh, You're really evolving. Yeah. And do you think practice? Yes, I, mean, I, I can show you what practice <laughs> will do. This owl is one I was telling you that I made in seventh grade that mom never threw away. And that was with a probably a one inch wood chisel and a coping saw. But uh, I w I've always you know, been doing something mm -hmm. out in the garage. And yeah, with your hands. Yeah. Uh, I was never a real good student. Uh, I'd rather carve on the desk than do homework on the desk. <laughs> And all of us have different yeah. gifts. <laughs> yeah. These little motorcycle engines are all out of spark plugs and drawer pulls and that type of thing. Okay, um, down here. Okay. But can they, are those these? Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Yeah. But those are all made, yeah. Yeah, they're just made out of scrap pieces. And what era, pieces. I mean, when, when would some of these things, um, I mean, how, when did, uh, like in your adulthood, um, when would these have evolved? Before? Well, in the last, it would have been after. Uh, I didn't really, until I got out of service, got back into uh, starting doing artwork and stuff. And I'm in supervision now when I was hands-on welding on the boilers and that type of thing all the time. But my I was better with the torch and you know it didn't take anything to put these things together but i was telling you earlier there's the eyeball <laughs> from the yard sale but i i could see that on a on a stand maybe and, it could be uh, displayed yeah okay. and uh, that is supposed to be a carving of myself and that's a, one of my friends that i carved or ride with and you can see a lot of these things guys like this. And these are my favorite ones to show the, the old ladies and you'd be surprised how tickled they get when you show them the back. <laughs> There's the front and the back. <laughs> Oh, 
Have you got that? No, I can't find you. Oh, here. How about next to the eyeball? Can you find that? Okay, no. Okay. Turn All right, now. French. One forward and one back. All these little characters. Of, uh, uh, the wood is all come. It's all linden wood, and it's all come from pallets. And so uh, you can go behind Walmart and find a linden wood pallet and cut the wood up. So uh, that's a, what? With a lot of what, all, does all it look a lot any much different than cottonwood? Uh, cottonwood, uh, I've never really carved it, but I've been told it will carve better when it's green and then when it dries, it's hard to work. Now that I don't. Well, I was just saying, yeah. I think a lot of pallets made of cottonwood yeah. also. Yeah, yeah. Okay. If you go back, you'll start recognizing uh, the linden wood and. Uh, Does it have? Not, what, do you, what do you recognize about it? it has uh, just the, the shape and the texture. Okay. There, there, there's a piece of, of the linden wood. Oh, and, yeah. uh, and then that's what these, you can these see old where, men are going to be out of. Yeah, it, they all start out like that. Oh, this is great. <laughs> You're just a scrounger. Just hey, like, yeah, am I better than the flower garden? The flower, yes, you're my, yeah. the, you are, you're more what we're looking for. These absolutely. are these are two pieces that have been, been ripped down. And you can tell just because I cut them to be to use for carving that I've been beating on stuff with them, so nothing is sacred in the in the garage. Okay. Yeah, no, I guess these are. And you know, you'll find one that's a little hippier than the other one, or, and you'll find a piece you like, and then you kind of save that back. And you can see there. there's one that's roughed out in, in different stages you can see there and there's another one that's starting a little mm -hmm. bit. Do you think you've been influenced by the faces you do um, from well almost a, between a Santa Claus and a gnome looking? Yeah. The, the mountain man look. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. The hippie look. Okay. The, the, 60s biker look kind of all yeah there you go all into one. good Absolutely. way to describe so, it yeah and that's what i told the newspaper and then they had they yeah and this is my peg leg frog so i found this frog with a broken leg <laughs> so i brought him home and uh, gave him a new lease on life good deal. so well, here you've got the one started there, too, and yeah, that would be linden. Yeah, that's, again, a piece of linden wood, and you can see how I'll rip those down on the... Mm -hmm. uh, and you'll see a lot of mistakes and things up here. That's good. You know, here's something a little different uh, in that sense. So why, that's not a mistake. No, I just no. carved it, but never had any... I could see going along all the garage with these under the eaves, but uh, I get these ideals and sometimes they don't, they never get finished. <laughs> I have a whole garage. But that means you've still of, got something, you know, you've still got it up there though. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, the museum up there in Lucas, I can see paths through here with all kind of stuff. <laughs> and, uh, We're just all for that kind of yeah. behavior. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. See, with one, um, just the leg on it. Have you had the, the tripod thing out here? Experimenting and you find these things. Oh boy, I figured it out. And no. then six months later you read in a book somewhere how to do it. And <laughs> it took me two years to learn that. You said, no. Yeah. Here, so. let's get this squared away here. Before I just I haven't really done a, a big piece for some time. Yeah. That piece my grandfather carved, and that is from driftwood off the of Wildcat Creek. And he carved that for me when I was five or six years old. And it was an old military bike, but I'm putting it back together like a, 
50 style bobber. So uh, it's, I'm putting it together period correct. I'm even using uh, old friction tape instead of wire ties. It has a 36 Ford tail light on it. But uh, if you was in the 50s, this is how you get a hot rotted one. So, and I have a straight pipe on it. And I'm going down to Oklahoma this weekend to get the engine for it. So do, do people know that you do this type? I mean, this is as creative uh, too, I would say. I mean, yeah. what parts did you actually get? Uh, what did you have to start in with? Uh, I can show you a picture of what this motorcycle looked like. They had made a chopper out of it in the 70s. Mm -hmm. yeah. So had to find an original frame and an original front end and uh, and you can buy a lot of reproduction parts for this particular motorcycle so but you're taking it and did it did it come in uh, pretty good shape i mean no too, no. <laughs> no it was it was horrible so how how old are we taking this was its first life here uh, or has no, it been re uh, it had been butchered and uh, mm -hmm. uh this motorcycle is 60 years old, so it's, see that's a lot of the metal work and the body work kind of, and then that's gone over into the sculpture, the, the weirder stuff, so, and one kind of leads to the other, and uh, I'll be trimming a piece of metal or something for this fender and I'll find, I'll lay it over the side because I might see where I do some strange thing. A lot of okay. stuff goes in the trash too. So I'd be lying if I told you it hadn't been. But, but do people, uh, do motorcyclists know you do this sort of thing? And do you few of the few close of friends. It's I don't go advertising. Okay, much try to now. try. This could probably be a whole yeah. occupation in itself. Yeah. Well, of. this chain guard is I fabricated and made that whole piece for the you know, go back here and I duplicated the original with the exception of taking a turn on the back but most people won't even know that it was, it was not made it was the original or not the original okay so did, did you were um, alive when these types of did you Ride these types of This is 1942, so well, I'm, yeah, no, so I'm not, not quite that old. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> so, so uh, is it just um, you you like motorcycles so well that you would know, or uh, do you have a book that? How, how can you get this detailed without? A lot of it is just you know reading and following the pop pop culture of, of the 50s okay. and the hot rods and stuff. I don't know, you guys might have remembered the little uh, valve stem caps with yeah. the little crowns okay. on them. Uh -huh. When I was a kid, I always used to see for family pictures and that type of thing. So I just painted a highway. I wanted to do it on the outside, but the uh, wife told me, don't you dare. Got it. Yeah, got in the winter time, you're gonna roll a motorcycle or a car in front of it and pretend like you're going down the road. <laughs> how old is it? So but how long was this event? This was a Saturday yeah. thing that uh, I came back from Sturgis and i had been riding mm -hmm. quite a bit and I had this picture in my head, so I just couldn't throw away all that pain. <laughs> so. But it's amazing you do, you know, you change mediums here quite easily and so I think your grandpa some of them was yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well I just uh, I think the shock factor I just want people to come in here and go ah here's that spare tire you know. the, the ring would go around the around the oh. tire and that ring is what they would take off and uh, use now what year car is this? This is a 36 Ford. Okay, my dad had a 37. But you know, I don't remember having a spare tire back it then. Didn't, 37 was the first year that they took the spare tire off and they put it in the trunk. Okay. And they went to a solid steel top in them in 37. 
So this was the last year for a lot of the things that Ford had done. Okay. And now this is the same original? same tail light that I'm putting on the motorcycle, so they'll match. Oh. There's my uh, <laughs> 1950s style artwork. Yeah. Um, the flying eyeball and the eight ball and, and the flames, but mm -hmm. uh, I just nice. I couldn't leave my creeper alone. I had to fan '89, and it was used in '89 when I bought it. But uh, I fell down on it, and I repainted it, and I painted the flames and everything on it. So uh, yeah, that's all my artwork on it, on the tank. So. And I had the old man bike over there. Man and man invented tools. So I thought that was, that's appropriate. Now there. There's another uh, take on the little old ladies and the saw blades. <laughs> you know, how dare you paint barns on saw blades? <laughs> <laughs> good for you. Make a statement here. And well, art doesn't have to be good. It's just. Even if you get a negative response, you've got that person <laughs> to come out of the shell and say, Whoa, that's a lot. Wow. Yeah. That's what I'm, I'm always amazed at. Well, I used to, uh, do, uh, to do it on a continuous basis, I suppose, in the last 15 years. Well, when we all have to work. And well, I have things. so many interests that, you know, this motorcycle. Uh, I get the engine, I'll probably dedicate the next month, you know, working on it. You know, and I'll go through phases. With, uh, I may go through several months of nothing but wood carving. And, uh, well, two probably... years ago I went out and I cut cedar trees and I spent a week. And I have a pile of them up in the overhead. So now all I have to do is just go get a stick and I want to carve. Which makes it so much easier in the wintertime. Mm -hmm. because and that's very doable wherever yeah. you're at that, that yeah. size. I used to roll around on the floor out here all winter long and it didn't bother me. I sit out here now and I feel every draft in this place. <laughs> <laughs> Too bad when we so get rolling, old. Yeah, <laughs> rolling around on the floor is not as much fun as it used to be. Now the totem pole that I mentioned, were you talking about it? Uh, I hadn't said anything about that. Uh, the, okay. the artwork is another gentleman's i took it out of a book on how to carve totem poles and you know i mm -hmm. didn't copy his work per se but anybody that looks at it can tell where i came up with the mm -hmm. pattern but uh, i carved that for the boy scouts and uh, that was a centerpiece at our pack meetings and uh, mm -hmm. dinners and things like that so uh, I, that was at the head table and uh, I had another one down here, it's not as good, but uh, all the boys in the Weeblow group signed it, you know, that type of thing, so I think I enjoyed Boy Scouts far more than the boy did. Uh, <laughs> he's out in Colorado now, and he's going elk hunting here in the next couple of weeks. I asked him if he remembered any of his Dutch oven cooking, he said, no, I don't really think so. <laughs> but, yeah, we... Yeah, I see a little dinosaur in behind on the top of the trophy. Does that have a story, or is he just sitting up there, and maybe he's not even wood? Oh, <laughs> that the, the dinosaur was a yard sale thing, and uh, I thought he looked good on top of the trophy. So. <laughs> <laughs> and so I'm starting, but it was those same same words, and it's just. Well, you have to stop and see this. You guys look like yeah. this. I thought we were talking about Playhouse Dolls, something like yeah. that. This is just right off, you know, Junction City where that meat pot is planted. Right across N670, and you never see this thing. I don't think anything about it, but uh, I had stood Shore Patrol when I was in the Navy, and I wanted a Shore Patrol helmet. And I had that skull and the sunglasses and these. Uh, one of the guys was out in the yard and threw his sunglasses down and walked off and, and you know I'm not wearing these stupid things so I picked them up and brought them in and, and these are Walmart skulls that I've gone in and sanded all the casting off and antiqued them and I had them sitting out in the flower bits that people were really I thought you know maybe that's not quite politically correct but I brought them in and I thought, I've got to get that 
short coat helmet for him. And I got that over at the Army Surplus store. And, you know, then I, through memory, I was trying to remember what the short patrol helmet looked like. And uh, then I had a friend, I spent two months trying to get him to stamp me out the, the short patrol stencil, the SP mm -hmm. on there, the vinyl letter, letters. But mm -hmm. I wasn't going to buy anything for it. But I already had to buy the helmet. You realize this is your environment here. Oh, yeah. This is, this is Yeah, I don't have to go anywhere. <laughs> I say that, but when I visited Lucas, that was a weekend trip, and I planned it around Lucas because uh, I would get new inspiration because I think he is so neat, and I, you can just imagine the old boys in their big overalls down at the local co-op. What in the world? Right. He had to be the talk of the town. That's right. So I, I've just gotten a new front end, a new engine in the hot rod, and went to Lucas and spent the whole day and then found the grass root museum, uh -huh. and I thought, oh, this is so neat. And <laughs> spent the rest of the afternoon there in the wife said, are you done yet? And the guy that had gone in the basement and done, what was it, dots all over. Leroy Wilson, the yes. painting. And you had brought a whole wall of his basement in there. And I thought that was so neat. And I said, what's so neat about that? And then I got the video. You brought the videos there. Of, of the Kansas of the, one. Yes. yes. And I've watched that and I've loaned that out to 100 people. And then right next door, she the culture I got just in the little bar. I've never had barbecued uh, curly fries before. <laughs> so, you know, to me that was the, one of the neatest days I spent up there in Lucas. Well, you need to, we now to, I don't know if you got over to the Diebel House, which is another, uh, Florence Diebel did these outdoor postcard scenes out of the colored concrete and whatnot. But we weren't, it probably didn't belong to us then. But the family has given that environment to us, and she was 100 years old and had yeah. worked out in this yard for 50. And it's it's yeah. pretty tame, but it's like you know the foreheads of Mount Rushmore. We have. You, you told me about that, and I'm driving up and down all these little alleys oh. trying to find this, and I found it. <laughs> okay, <laughs> well now the house. There there is a gal who. Then her name is Kalar. She was in um, film production yeah. in her late 40s. She decided she's going to try art. And did some kind of modernistic paintings. And then through her husband, we had met him. And he was kind of looking for a place uh, to, um, I guess, study in Kansas. Mm -hmm. And he actually is a trained artist. But she had never, you know, she was off doing her things. And I don't think they were married all of their lives. I yeah. think they married family. Anyway, and she comes in the door and says, I want to take junk and create uh, <laughs> junk assembly pieces inside this house, floor to ceiling. Mm -hmm. And we're thinking, we don't know you from Adam. Uh, do we run with it? Let this lady do what she wants to in the four, you know, that thing for two years, the house had been empty, and you know, let's face it, it was a hundred-year-old woman living there at the old office. She said, "I'll clean that all out, and I want to make that an interior." She calls it now the Garden of Ice and Star Club, and it's everything from brake shoes to computer motherboards to pizza cutters to now she's doing rebar, recycled Barbie dolls, and she is the no head, no problem. Uh, missing legs, no problem. They get incorporated into things. And she foil lined the walls first on the house with the silver insulation. So that's the first, you know, you come into this 1906 home with a yeah. lovely oak river. And you've got this luminous wall reflected. And then floor to ceiling. Now, I can see this the Christmas junk. tree. <laughs> just just. Wheel. Oh, well, that's true. Walls. It's hard to photograph. In a, yeah. But now four rooms of that house are recycled junk. And, oh, and so neat. it's another, so now we have this, we're, we're thinking we need to market it as the triangle with the Garden of Eden, the Gaucho Center, and the Diebel House. 
this is somewhat like the Bermuda Triangle. You hit the Lucas Triangle and you're, you're changed forever. <laughs> and wife asked me after I'd taken your phone call, does this mean we're moving to Lucas now? <laughs> I, said, if only. I, I said if I can retire. <laughs> if so, only. Yeah. Well, yeah. you have uh, creative. I, I'm, I mean, I, I was just thinking about this piece. Now, is it because of your boiler train? How, how can you make a piece like that? I guess this is something I've strived to do, you know, the, the big hot rodders and everything, hand fabricate these aluminum body cars and uh, things like that, and I'm nowhere, I'm not master of any trade, I'm just kind of, you know, a little of this and a little of that, and you can tell that in, in the shop. And, but you like things. And I'm not a business. Look, yeah. Look pretty good. And I'm not a business person, so it would be foolish to try to. And I don't stay focused on any one thing long enough to make a fortune anyway. So. But you enjoy uh, what you're doing. Oh, you bet. I'm just seven years, and I'm, I'm retired. So. Look out. <laughs> uh, I just really think it's so neat you guys put that out there like that and like Earl he's such a character and the first time I met Earl I just started up at the college and I was sent out with another guy to work on the boiler and Earl was out there in this greenhouse with this boiler and he just takes off blankety blank blank don't you be coming in here goofing off if you're coming in here I expect you to do some work I'm not paying the bill if you aren't going to do any and I'm going whoa and the guy I was with, him and Earl, just back and forth, and I was probably 22, 23, and I put the fear of God in there. And i had been to high school with Earl's son, but uh, after that, you know, after I'd been there three or four years, I was working by myself all the time. But every time I went in out there, you better believe I was on my best behavior around Earl. But, uh, <laughs> Yeah, I wouldn't even thought. Yeah. Or he likes it done right, doesn't he? Yeah. I mean, yeah. he's kind of a perfectionist. Yeah, he, he, he is. In, in that sense, yeah. you know, you weren't going to go out there and uh, leave that boiler with a bunch of leaks on it. And uh, he'd tell you to. But I went out there and they had, uh, they thought they were going to get to the power plant and they were going to, uh, if their gas bills were too high and everything. So they pulled this boiler out, which is the most efficient heat you can get. And they put in all these big gas heaters. Well, when they done that, Earl's shop area and office didn't have any heat. So at that time, we're he's respecting me a little more for for my thinking. I come in to do something, and he said, "What do you think I can do?" And I was joking. I said, "Earl, you can just hook a recirculating pump up to that hot water heater and run it around through that." Uh, thin tube radiator you have in that office and I said it's not there to heat I said you aren't drinking that your hot water is for washing and that type of thing it'll work just fine I was joking Earl did it and it worked <laughs> so that's a story on Earl and uh, uh, he had done that I don't know if he's had seen his orange tree no, I not, not. We saw a photograph of it out in his front yard. He, he had this tree, and he says you've got to come out and see it. And I came out to see it, and there is this tree painted orange with all these balls hanging. I said, "Oh, that is the neatest thing I ever saw." I said, "What kind of tree was it?" He looked at me and says, "An orange tree." <laughs> So, and it was an orange tree. He'd gone to the hardware store and bought out all the paint they had. Uh, it was discontinued or whatever on sale. And he went home and I could see him hours out there rolling this paint on this tree. I know, but see, if you have a mission, you got it in your head, yeah. got to go do it. Then. But Earl has served as an inspiration on some of that, too. you got to be yeah. wackier than Earl. <laughs> so there's a competition, you know, in, in some sense. The, uh, well, good. We're just we're in, we're encouraging all of that. You realize yeah. we're uh, just telling people to have yes, do what you feel called yeah. to do. Everybody. I was surprised to hear from you because that's been 
five, six years that I was out there, and then just out of the blue sky. I know. We try and, uh, and surprise people. <laughs> and, well, the art projects that you had that festival, and the festival, and the kids were doing the, the blocks with the stuff, the broken glass and the china oh, and the different things. He was doing stepping something. stones or something, a, a hands-on type yes, project. Yes. I thought that was so neat. And I took that idea of a thing going through the yard. And uh, I was a gentleman that lived down the street from us in California, I guess around I was 12, 13 years old, uh, doing odd jobs for people. And the big thing out in California was watering people's yards when they were on vacation. But this gentleman had gone in his backyard and there were paths through his backyard and he uh, built rock walls up where you walked through about waist high. And he had little rivers in Indian villages and everything and all the plants. And he'd walk down these little paths and there were all these little villages and everything. <laughs> Out, not not on the. Uh, you had your your parameters to yeah. walk, and then down over here. Yeah, this was all yes. waist high yes. type thing. His all his flowers and gardens and everything were all waist high where he could work in them, and he was an older gentleman. That's his time. And but then he had all these little teepees and uh, Indians and canoes and things down, and the little rivers and things down through the flower beds and stuff. Well, so, if you think of. Yeah, I would have been in fourth, fourth or fifth grade at that time. But you know, those I think those things make impressions on you. Absolutely. So. Well, thank goodness. But yeah, I remember him <laughs> living in California with, with me in that sense. Well, you know, they're number one. They're ahead of us. But now, yeah. see, with you here, we can. Yeah. <laughs> we have a chance to get more sights, and we can keep working on. Well, the thing I've been thinking of the last few years is the art car, and I want one of these little square, boxy, compact Ford Fiesco things, and I can see a big shark in with these big toad-like warts all over this thing, and, you know, I just have visions of it, and then welded spider webs down off the shark's fin and, and things like that, it's kind of a... It's got to yeah. come to Lucas. Got to be in yeah. the parade. See mm -hmm. that way you could uh, you could go in and everywhere with it. Well, they, they, our one little gal in Lucas now actually she has a master's degree in art, but she has taken a uh, Michael Citizen bus, mm -hmm. converted this, and uh, she calls it her. What can I even say it? The world slowest versions of the world's largest. Uh, what is this, Steve? And it, it goes on. There's all another, you know, the world's yeah. uh, the world largest thing. And what she has done is she photographed, you know, like the world's largest musky, uh, Paul Bunyan. And then she creates yeah. her own small one. So in this traveling bed, she's a traveling roadside attraction, is what she calls. But you can see all the world's smallest versions. Of the world's largest things that are all over the United oh. States, <laughs> and she's got the bus all painted up now, and she's trying to to write grants and things to see if she can't become a tourism promotional thing, yeah. you know, because it's just kind of funny that it yeah. really is. But she's uh, she's been real pleasant. Sounds like she's had a lot of fun with it. She is, and yeah. she very creative and just. Uh, now she's thinking she needs a docking station, and uh, she has bought this just <laughs> a small little house in you know, it's just barely four rooms, and um, somehow she needs uh, a docking station, and she's thinking she needs a silo with Airstream trailers, you know, the silver, coming in. Somehow this, I yeah. don't know, but anyway, I said, well. Do you think you're going to make any progress? Well, if I can get enough stuff donated to me, because you have to you know, See, Lucas could be the next art commune. There we go. For all the 50, 60 type people <laughs> here in the next there? 20 years. Why yeah, not? We could really go big time. Why not? Why well, not? I can't imagine. Buy real estate now. Sell Lucas. high later. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Yeah, that, but, that sounds uh, I would move there. <laughs> 
one one told customer. Yeah. Well, it is just you know people yeah. can understand that. It's just people having fun. Well, see, I like the old hippie do. buses and the old Volkswagen buses, you know, and the way they were painted and everything back in the fifties and sixties. So I could very easily live in a bus <laughs> and work two yeah. of them together with a breezeway in between, you know, with uh, your workshop in between. There we go. So, yeah. Well. You may get your chance, who knows? You can see a whole community on the hillside. It looked like these humble shacks in Hong Kong, you know, with just pieces of tin and stuff all over, hanging on the side of the hill, so, you know. Has that had to influence you, being overseas? Oh, I think so. I think everything you do. Uh, I was real lucky that I got to see Hong Kong, Japan, the Philippines, and Australia, and I was in Greece, Italy, Spain, and I saw a lot of the museums and things over there, but, you know, but, uh, I'd still go to Alliance, Nebraska and get more out of car hinge than I would <laughs> out of stone hinge. Have we already ruined? Okay, tell us that again. Some pieces. This on is an old plow blade and a piece of throwaway brass and a shed deer antler and a piece of turquoise that's a uh, person that gave me a turquoise rock. And that is the other neat thing is people will bring you all kind of things is that they would normally throw away. So. Thank you. Those are the wing bones on a turkey. But these are all things that you, yeah, the Indians used to make these, and uh, they were the first ones to do that, but. Uh, and so what are, is it fine wire? Oh, uh, no, that's just uh, thread with fingernail polish on it, and uh, it's nothing, nothing fancy. And what would that be, something with? Turkeys are coming. Yeah, but I called my son's first turkey in with a call that I'd made. So, uh, yeah. And, uh, yeah, it was this one that is the one I used. So. Each one will have a little different sound to it. But this is I the... I carry these at work, and I get in the halls in different places at the university and I'll pull one of these out and I'll make strange noises and then just keep on going. <laughs> Life oh is too short God. not to have fun. Good for I mean, you. So. Good for you. I taught the, I'm teaching the granddaughter how to call crows. I had the whole tree out here full of crows one day. The neighbors, oh, I know they wish I'd move. <laughs> It really works, huh? Yes. And it's the same Well, not with present? these. I had no. a regular crow call. But, uh, yeah, I'm going to dement this little girl at an early age. She's two her antler. You put her on your files, and you, know, you don't have to buy all those fancy handles and stuff. It's, Probably lasts a lot longer anyway. Well, no. and nobody steals your tools either, because <laughs> <laughs> who has deer antler on their files? No, most so, people so, yeah, you're, you're not. You well, what would you, I guess I can whack on him a little bit. A little bit, and I'll probably I'll get sidetracked yet. Anyway, okay. there was my questions that we just, there are, and maybe some of these we've already answered yeah, too. Sounds like I need to come to Lucas again for new inspiration. I think you need to. So I, do I'm, you have any new videos? So we I've just. I've probably worn that other one out. <laughs> We, we have number 12, we were featured again on number 12 of Rare Visions and Red Side Revelations, but Kansas um, Arts Today just did us a, oh, you would like John Woods, wouldn't he, Steve? Mm -hmm. uh, so. Dug everything yeah. out of the bottom of the lake uh, in Los Angeles. This is guy in Kansas City now. He's, what is he, is he seven? We thought he was older. But I think he's 70s, early 70s, and uh, it was being dredged twice. It's Westlake Park in the heart of Los Angeles. He decided he ought to dig and see what everybody had lost. And people turn on a turn on a, a big metal.
table. I mean, the thing is heavy as all get out. I don't and know. U hauls would you had. <laughs> but this, he, he has a, a friend, Bill Wenzel in Kansas City, had met him out in, in California, and he has built Wenzel Steel Works in Kansas City, and he said, you ought to bring, um, you ought to come to Kansas City. You can work in my, you know, sh sh shed area, and yeah. inside of here. Well, that's just as crazy as picking up all that stuff, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> well, so. yes, but he thinks he's uh, fairly normal. Yeah. Well, we all do. <laughs> it, it's the rest of the world. Is out of Which is good. So Which is what good. was it in Lawrence that they hung from the tree? Shoes or umbrellas? Umbrellas. 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 I thought that was so neat. To, and uh, one of the gentlemen at work was living in that area at the time. Is that right? Yeah, and he, he, he said, oh boy, you wouldn't believe the, the stink that caused. And, you know, what did it hurt? I don't know, but there's so many self-righteous people out there. Let's get a life. Come on, <laughs> enjoy it a little bit. <laughs> this is true. So, yeah. Okay, do, do you want to, um, what do you think? Are you good? Well, let it just sit. Full name. Martin Veer Snyder. Love here. Here. V R E. V E R E. It's named okay. after both my grandfathers. Mm -hmm. so. All right, and we have your address. We know your phone number. Do you have an email? Yes. M A R S M Y at K S U dot E D U. Date of birth? Uh, Ten twenty one forty eight. And name of wife or wives? Just one. <laughs> it's all we can afford at the present. <laughs> Deborah. Um, all right. And children's name? Uh, Shannon and Jason. All right. Now, occupations during their working years? Uh, Boilerman. <laughs> And you said you were in the uh, Navy? Yes, was that I was right? in the Navy for four years and went out of high school, worked in the grocery stores and garages here in town and joined the Navy and went straight to the boiler room and been there pretty much ever since. But was that, that was good training that you got in the Navy? I would assume. I would pick a different occupation. But <laughs> Sometimes it's, it's not in the cards. <laughs> <laughs> and where have you lived throughout uh, your lifetime? Oh, uh, up and down the coast of California and in Kansas. And you said your Navy um, trips took you to what foreign countries? Oh, I've been to Australia, Japan, Philippines, uh, Hong Kong, Taiwan, Greece, Italy. Spain, Gibraltar, Malta, uh, Turkey, and I'm sure there's a few more there, but four years I was in, I was overseas the whole time. I was only back to the States maybe a year or so out of a four-year enlistment. So, yeah. I'm you know, they don't have much use for boilermen on shore. <laughs> It well. was a seagoing rate. <laughs> yeah, they put you on a ship and you wave goodbye. Uh, and we talked about this as far as formal training. You had to, um, in high school your ceramic class and yeah, you know, just, that was that. Uh, ceramics class and the painting class. So how did and you? And I had a jewelry class. I forgot about that. And did you get decent grades? Uh, in oh, art, I was a straight A student. Uh, <laughs> The rest of my uh, academic career is uh, not up to be discussed at this point. <laughs> I'm not asking about that. Um, <laughs> like, yes. They were glad to see me get out of high school, I'm sure. Uh, and then, um, has there been a, a point um, where you felt um, that it was okay? You know, like we were talking about, well, you know, people would say this would just be a waste of your. 
has there been a breakthrough point where you just say, well, this is what I want to do yeah. anyway? Would that have happened any time, like, you know, five years ago? Yeah. That would, was never a problem. I was always wanting the person to say he's a little strange. It's a defense where you can really be a nice person and you throw up that defense to kind of let them keep their distance. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. I liked it for people to think I was just a little different than the rest of everyone else. And the whole, so you, you, from early on, would that have been high school, you rode motorcycles? Well, I, mm -hmm. I came from California my sophomore year of high school, and I came into Manhattan High up here wearing peg pants, a surfer shirt, a DA haircut, and boat shoes. And it was like I'd walked in from another planet, and not a person would speak to me up there. And in Manhattan, they didn't even know what a surfer shirt was, and you couldn't even buy one at that time. And uh, you know, here's everyone in Levi's and cowboy boots, and I look like uh, I'm off the front of a Beach Boy album. So, yeah. <laughs> and what, what year would that have been? That would have been in 63. Uh, so, yeah, that was, that was definitely interesting. Uh, there was only one guy in the whole school at that time that would have anything to do with me, and he was one of these guys that was always reading hot rod magazines and had a bright yellow truck with a banana painted on the back of it. So, uh, Good. Yeah, I've always been drawn to the more of the artistic type people, I guess. So, uh, yeah, that's kind of a s statement. I don't know that I was trying for it especially being a teenager, but it happened that way. So did, did you feel you acclimated later on? What, would you, or did you always feel like maybe I, coming from the California background here a little bit? You know, at that yeah. age, uh, school was very clannish, and I never really did fit in through high school, not here in, in Manhattan mm -hmm. anyway. Mm -hmm. so. I think that's a hard age for any kid it is. to be up through the but were they moving, uh, your folks, uh, I assume, moved, yeah. moved back uh, to their, uh, this would yeah. be their home area. Yeah, my yeah. grandmother was, was here, and uh, she would have been in her 70s at that time, and she lived until she was in her 90s. The mom felt that uh, grandma was declining in, up in years and was mm -hmm. declining in health, so we needed to move back here to kind of watch over grandma and we get back to Manhattan, grandma got up and gone and got married and moved off down the street and said, you can just have our house, my old house. And so, <laughs> she, uh, uh, I found that to be, <laughs> be really humorous. Too much of an invalid then? <laughs> no, she was, was spry. Uh, there was rumors all around Manhattan of this little old man and little old lady going out fishing all the time. That was the local gossip, you know. <laughs> Uh, it was my grandma. <laughs> 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 so, that was really a, a neat story. Well, that's, so, that's true. It, uh... <laughs> you know, that's a, you know it, at that time, I was there was a sign that we were living in California, living in an apartment complex, and there was a, a sign painter coming in and painting the signs and everything. And I was hanging around this guy in the art classes in California and everything. Well, the whole school system was just a lot different than Manhattan, and there was a lot more vocational training and everything else. And the physical fitness aspect, the gym classes, and that type of thing were a lot more intense. And uh, so it was a it was a culture shock coming from California back to Manhattan. Mm -hmm. and I often wondered where I might have been if I had still been in California. One of the books there is one. There is a house that is covered with a dome of pipes, and they turn on the water, and it goes out all over this house. But there's all this neat, strange stuff like that. So, so it would kind of go through the pipes. Do yeah, you think it's, the it's water? like a giant sprinkling system, system with you know, holes in the pipes, and they've done the dome thing over the whole house and yard and everything turn on the water and oh yeah isn't that neat that is 
Oh, I know. That, we just haven't seen anything, have we? <laughs> I mean, there are things out there that I think, yeah. you know, if you're in the, the right area, yeah. right place. Well, you've heard of the Burning Man uh, thing out in the desert. Yeah. The big art thing. Yeah. You need to do on a smaller scale, maybe a little tamer. Uh, there in Luke, it's a full week of art fest. You know. <laughs> Well, we're thinking we're going to start next year, so maybe we need you on the, the dream committee. <laughs> well, dreams are easy. <laughs> Putting them in, in, into action. If we have good, we get good ideas, we can roll with them pretty good. It's just, it's coming up, you know, picking people's brains for them. You need someone them. like Earl. He's an old bulldog. He, he won't let go. <laughs> <laughs> He's a gem, though. I both me and Juan are just I, I think great people. Very, very highly Earl. I love his weather vein as you walk in the house. <laughs> well, and, the, and the, just the whole shop out there is yeah. just... Martin, have you seen the, the South Gallery of the Art Center? Have you been out there since then? No. Uh, it's been five or six years. See, We're talking about Lucas. Yeah, you would have yeah. not seen the courtyard in the back and limestone or anything. No, oh, you, you need to come, come out. In. You need to come so, in. See, Osborne, Kansas had that uh, car show that one weekend. And I went a day early and spent a whole day in Lucas. Mm -hmm. That was an attitude mental thing for me, too, because I'd taken the manager's position back in the power plant. And, uh, I wasn't well accepted when I went back to the power plant as the manager because there was a, already a pecking order and I came in on top of all of that. And uh, I needed to get away from the things and boy that trip just did it for me. So I jumped in the hole and hot rod and just <laughs> went and clear out the left field. And, uh, and so, yeah, there was there. We were. Well yes, you need to come back because there's that's yeah. it, it, it's just good, I think, to... I stopped and think about it. You know, that's very similar to walking into high school dressed so funny. Uh, these promotions and walking in to different parts of your life on your jobs and things like that. Because, uh, you know, from turning wrenches and being hands-on to sitting behind a desk is quite a change. Absolutely. And, uh, people look at you a lot differently, too. So, okay. Yeah. Yeah. All of life has changed, isn't it? Uh, I hate computers. <laughs> <laughs> well, join the, join the. <laughs> I, well, yeah, I'm I don't really car. know where to go with this guy. He was kind of a mistake to begin with. <laughs> Nothing <laughs> is. So I keep asking questions. Then I have a dull knife blade. <laughs> um, has your work been continuous? Yes. I've been at the. Uh, College up there for 31 years, one month, and two weeks, and four days. <laughs> okay, I'm back to doing, has this work been oh. continuous from the time you... Um, I would you say from, uh, from a very young age, I used to take the little cowboys and toy soldiers and things and take model paint and detail them and paint them and, you know, paint all the gear on them. And, everything like that. So I just didn't have your know, plastic soldiers and cowboys. They were, and I got more enjoyment out of that than playing with them. And uh, the same way with the model cars, and I couldn't leave a model car alone. I was always chopping them the top or shortening the body or doing something to them. And, uh, which I have, I still have a drawer full of a bunch of them over here. Don't do anything with them. Keep them. <laughs> I have a 59 Mercury over there that was brand new in 59, but it's painted flat black, black gold interior, and nose is clear in the ground with spinner hook caps. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't leave it alone. We may have to get a photo of that too. That might so, be worth it. You know, it's it's kind of broken up now. But Oh, well, that's all right. It's if it still over. has a has a look to it, with a lasted over the years, and we we've talked about how it has changed over the years that you see growth in your uh, carving. And what yeah. You're doing. 
And I think that's just through repetition and mm -hmm. taking one ideal and staying with it for a long period of time. We found it to get a little bit better. Mm -hmm. And do you have any special time of the day that you like to create? Uh, I think the best time is when I can dedicate a whole day to it. I used to be a lot more ambitious when I'd get home from work. I would come right out to the garage. And as I get older, sometimes it's a little easier to do the crossword and <laughs> pick up the stick and just scribble on it. So uh, I'm looking forward to where I can weekends and days off. I can be up at six and, and go to eight, nine o'clock, and I just get so much done. Mm -hmm. So yeah, the weekends or full days are the best. Did you ever teach anyone how to do what you do? I, with Boy Scouts, have taught different carving classes. Uh, I taught a leadership class of adults for the Scouts. and uh, tried to teach them how to carve a dog. And I think the majority of the carvings ended up in the campfire. I've never seen so many grown-ups act so childish when, when it came to dealing with frustrations. That, uh, they could not make that piece of wood look like a dog. So, well, could it uh, become anything else? Did any of them? <laughs> did it? Well, could you envision anything else besides the dog? I had roughed all these out on the bandsaw, where all you really had to do was kind of round the edges. But uh, you'd be surprised; a lot of people can't even do that. <laughs> so, and uh, I have a, uh, a cousin that had been a prison guard and everything, and she is retired, and she came back to see my mother when she was 92, and she came over to the garage, and I was showing her the carvings and things, and I was being a smarty pants, I said, you want to, do, want to carve one? And we spent a whole day out here doing wood carvings, and she'll email me constantly, and I'm constantly sending her uh, plans or drawings on something where she's wanting to carve a chain and uh, do this type of thing. And uh, last Christmas I took made a tear package and I cut several blocks and I roughed several out with the bandsaw and then I took one into the rough stages of the carving and I had a complete Santa so it was basically one through five and uh, she could take it and go with it. Uh, so that just tickled her to death as she cut that. And, uh, I've done quite a few Boy Scout things, with the walking sticks and things like that. Mm -hmm. And I told you I was going to do that class at the old Kirk, so. yeah. uh, I get a lot of enjoyment out of that. Uh, I don't know if anybody ever follows through with it. But, uh, well, are they actually going to carve, or are you going to just demonstrate on how I'm just going to demonstrate, yeah. and in this case, see where it goes. If, they would like me to come back or something, or if there would be a group of a few that would like to do it, yeah, I'd be more than glad to come back and do it okay. with them. So. Okay. And, uh, anyway, nothing real formal, just, I don't know, more of an ego trip for me, I guess, than maybe for them. But Compliment, too, um, for what you're doing. Um, we talked about, did you ever sell any of your work? I never have, no. Mm -hmm. I told everybody that that one wood duck up there has a dollar value of $125 on it. Because I stuck a gouge in my hand and it took six stitches <laughs> and it cost $125 to sew that hand up. So I know that bird is worth $125. <laughs> A lot of pain and grief. Yeah. <laughs> it may have no artistic value, but it has a dollar value. <laughs> okay, do you call yourself an artist? No. How about you? A craftsperson, maybe. But, uh, yeah. Would you call yourself an artist when you come to um, the motorcycle? No, there are people out there that just do such fantastic work. So, I'm somewhere in the middle, I think, of a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. And do you, what, what do you call uh, your art? Do you have any certain mm -hmm. name? 
made for? No, the wife calls it junk. <laughs> God. <laughs> I've, I've told her I have an ambition to fill this garage up with just as much stuff as I can. So when I pass on, they're going to spend a year out here saying, well, what in the world was he doing with this? Or what do you suppose this is? Is this done or is this... <laughs> yeah, and I'm not leaving instructions for anything. <laughs> so, yeah. But I, and I think that will work. That's it. You'll have accomplished your well, I, I see this with your environment out here to do. Well, in a hundred years, they'll say, yeah, your great-grandfather, your grandfather was really a colorful character, and that would be the best compliment I could get. <laughs> so. All right. Um, did you, um, would you say that you had a vision as to whatever, like this walking stick is going to become? Or what, uh, how do you, uh, would you just say that it, how does a it appear? A lot of these ideals are a progression. Uh, I got the ideal to carve a wizard, and then the next stick I put leaves behind it, and i done a stick here the, a while back, and I put flames and a, a lizard on it. This one I saw spider webs along with it, so everything is kind of a progression, and one idea will lead into another. I don't know that I just have these instant flashes. Kind of flows right along yeah. from the. Uh, yeah. Um, and uh, this just started out as doodling in front of the TV, and, and then I got the idea of doing the spider web because I saw it on. Magazine or something, and I've drawn flames ever since I was in seventh grade. Instead of taking notes in class, I was drawing flames and hot rods. So. And then the lizard it, and I basically on this one I started at the bottom of the stick and just started drawing up. This is really good in detail, man. Yeah. And now you've got the, uh, yeah, that is really yeah. progress. Uh, and the very first ones I've done, the uh, proportioning one quite right and they still aren't really correct you know, they've constantly got more and more detail in them as I've gone on mm -hmm. and, uh, through repetition you, you get a little bit better and a little bit better and on this the last oh six months I've started going in with uh, the stains and things and back shadowing and see maybe this is the flames are lighter and it's mm -hmm. darker and it's really made the work jump out at you more. And, and now I see, what, what is, That was just that was a name plate, and uh, instead of carving a name or anything in it, I just left that particular one blank. Just so, got the screws and work Yeah, and that's really hard to screw one of those on there like that. <laughs> so, if you have a lot of time, I'll show you how it's done. Sometime. All right, we'll come back another, another time. Yeah. Have, have you got a favorite uh, sculpture or piece that you've done for one reason or another? I think my favorite one is the uh, Cedar Indian up there on the very, very top. Which would be? Yeah, from way up there. Him back there? Yeah. yeah. Just the way the hair is flowed and the different colors of the wood and the, the streaks down through his face, that mm -hmm. uh, has been my favorite. And, uh, and I, the piece of walnut, I've got a lot of expression. I don't know, this one was a good one, too. Can, get can you get him down and we'll take it back over where, where I'm here? <laughs> Let's see if I get something to stand on. Take him over.
fire with the boys were going to burn the campfire and I saved it before they they stuck it in the fire and unfortunately I didn't date it so I can't really tell you the the year maybe, maybe five ten years ago um, probably and how long would it, I mean, did you work on this off and on, or did you This I had, you know, just to say how many hours, but I had at least a month of weekends and that type thing, and there was a lot of time in this, and a lot of it not knowing the direction I was going in it, because it was a different style face and things that I normally had done, so. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's kind of dusty, but the knots and the, the white and the red and the wood and everything, so everything kind of flowed on that one. Would that me. be like a, a red cedar, or is it a different Yeah, this kind is of just your regular old Kansas cedar, yeah. so uh, you can find some of these trees with, uh, and even these sticks, uh, this whole area right in here may all be red, and then others just have a little bitty vein of, of red in them. And I was hoping at some point to find enough cedar of these limbs and things where you could actually carve back in and bring the red out through this. And, but I haven't been able to dedicate the time to go out there and just start cutting tree limbs just to find that right limb. <laughs> It's more of pick up and use whatever I find at right. this point. Mm -hmm. but, uh, so many of these people retire and they just don't know what they are going to do. And I just can't see being a greeter at Walmart. I mean, what kind of life is that? I mean, well, I want to come out here in the garage and offend people with all this strange stuff in the yard or, you know. Just do. I know. That's hard. We gotta have all yeah. sorts of people to make yeah. the world go round. Walk around the yard wearing beads and a headband, you know, anything <laughs> to, to get the neighbors to to look when they go by. Too many boilers. Too but, many. But, what, what's really neat though is when they look, you wave, and then they go in total shock and withdrawal. <laughs> and they just don't know how to handle that. <laughs> uh, so, anyway. It's good to have fun. Though. All right, how about this question? Has it been costly for you to create all these years? Uh, whatever, I think the biggest investment would be like a band song, a few things like that. And that has made a big difference in the work, too, and the, and the, the amount of work I turn out. Because before, you'd have to cut everything out by hand, and I, I like that instant gratification. So. That's why you see a lot of the little trinket nickel dime stuff because you get instant gratification there. You can do that in one night or something like this. You really need to dedicate your time to it. Mm -hmm. That's what we mean about the retirement where you come out here and spend a week or two days and really get into it. And, uh, That's what we're counting on. You know, and your hands work different. You know, you, and, and your mind works different at different times. And, Boy, some days everything just flows, and the next day you couldn't put a nail in a two by four with a with a sledgehammer if you wanted to. So, mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. A little carving somewhere, wherever that is. Go ahead. Well, I'm trying to help you think of it. What does your wife or family think of your eyes? Uh, they put up with it. My son is starting to come around. He's out in Colorado, and we were out. Uh, when I went to Sturgis this year, I came back down through Colorado and stopped and spent an evening with him. There was a, a person out there that does sculpture and stuff out of old uh, car hoods, you know, car parts and that type thing. Mm -hmm. And the school that he just built out there with the companies with had purchased one of these and had this dinosaur thing. And he got the keys to the school and gave me the tour of it, and I got to see that piece of work. And he showed me where the guy lived and wanted me to go by and see his work. He said, you'll get along great with that old guy. <laughs> but uh, I got up at 
four o'clock in the morning and left to get out of Fort Collins before there was any traffic. And, uh, so I didn't didn't see the go back. Go there. Well, now I know where he lives. <laughs> yeah, I, I probably will. Uh, well, the, and what age is he? He's 27. And then your daughter? Uh, she's 30. Yeah, 30. All right, and how about uh, you, the reaction of neighbors? Or has city council, you haven't had anything that no. Uh, no. But n neighbors, you were kind of sharing earlier. If you uh, have anything, yeah, the biggest thing is just the people walking by. I never really have had anybody stop, and if they see you looking, they'll turn and look the other way. They don't want <laughs> they don't want anybody to realize they're actually looking at anybody. I can't believe nobody is that curious. Yeah. You know, I'm afraid. Yeah. I'd probably. <laughs> Earl has been a big supporter. He's brought uh, his daughter over and he's photographed the, the dragon and out here on mm -hmm. the pole and that mm -hmm. type of thing. And uh, I've had a few people from work they'll come by and uh, that type of thing. Okay. Maybe I need to put a spotlight on it. <laughs> that would do it. That was yeah. really. And I know you've been featured that one time in the Manhattan Mercury because yeah. Earl sent me the, the, the deal. Yeah. Any more? No. 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 Okay. It must not have been a very newsy week that week. They were desperate. Yeah, yeah. Well done. Well done. And we've, we've talked about you talking to other groups that we're going to be doing that. Yeah. I think that's my my list of questions. Well, you got any for, for us? <laughs> No, I just think it's so neat you're doing this. Well, you know. we uh, just applaud all of you that are out here doing your thing. Well, I never felt I really merited, you know, up there with, with all these other eccentrics, but that's a definite <laughs> goal, goal in my Go. life. <laughs> Go so, for it. Go. So even being considered in the running is, is a neat thing. Absolutely. So, yeah. Well, it just takes us forever. I don't know why this is to get. A, well, and it's we're you know small staff, and yeah. uh, we're we're both part time, and so to come on out and but we just we were just getting quite a few in our notebook, and I had called one lady, and she's already died, and I'm thinking, okay, you've just got to get through some yeah. of these names. Well, I think it's so neat to take time and talk to me out there, and. Uh, well, yeah. that's the and way we... <laughs> un unknowingly, you motivated me there because I came back, you know, after seeing... Uh, well, if you haven't even... stuff and done some of the concrete... You've got to come again and tell me when you're coming so I can be there. But our yeah. the South Building, like I say, he would, if you haven't seen any of those things... Yeah. Uh, oh, the place has doubled would. in size and, and added things that I think you'd be a little think surprised. it's been there that long. Uh, we were probably pretty new. We, yeah. uh, I think, uh, really were not until '96 yeah. uh, was about the first year that we were open for a. Uh, yeah, a and year. the young lady uh, down at the cabin uh, told me, you know, that, mm -hmm. yeah, you need to go up on Main Street, or <laughs> we wouldn't even know about it. So well, that I know. Was neat that she sent me we're up there. still trying to get people uh, to go up to Main Street, but we're we're getting a little better known, but it's still. Yeah. Uh, it's a, you know, 100 years of the Garden of Eden being there, it's pretty hard to, yeah. to still compete with the Garden of Eden. But we, we like all of our people, but to, to, to yeah. we do the same. Well, and depending, you know, I could see spending a day or two days, you know, just, and if you're doing more stuff in town, that is so neat. We, we are. We're trying to stay to our... Uh, I ride up to Sturgis every year, South Dakota, and I like going through these little towns and things. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of the city parks, you know, they'll have wood carvings, and there's just all kind of neat roadside interest. But, uh, I've come through the Garden of Eden at 5:30 in the morning and stopped, you know, <laughs> and down the road I went. So, uh, it is a monument, you know. Yeah. Some people study it for the architecture, you know, style and. Sometimes it's just, you know, political philosophy. There's a whole lot of different ways to look at the yeah. environment. Uh, but it's just that there are so many, you know, it's just kind of everybody has their own little, you know, things that have happened to them in their lives that affect what they do yeah. as they go into the time. So. Yeah. Well, 
No, and he was older when he done it. And the neatest thing, too, was where he was ripping the city. He had the pond tied into the city when he paying for the water. I thought that was a human interest story. Yeah, so I come home figuring, how can I tie into the city over here? <laughs>